Wormwood, I'm very displeased with the news that your patient has become a Christian. Don't even think for a moment that you'll escape the usual penalties. When you have a clear head, I don't think you'll even want to do so. In the meantime, we've got to make the best of the situation. There's no need to despair. Hundreds of these adult converts have been reclaimed after a brief time in the enemy's camp, and are now with us. All of the habits of the patient, body and mind, are still in our favor. One of our greatest allies these days is the church itself. Don't misunderstand me, I don't mean the church as we see her, spread out through all of time and space, terrible as an army with banners. That, I confess, is a sight that makes even our boldest tempters uneasy. But fortunately, it's completely invisible to the humans. All your patient sees is the half-finished, false gothic architecture on some valuable downtown land. When he goes inside, he sees the local grocer with a rather oily expression on his face, bustling up to offer him some coffee and cookies, followed by a service full of spectacle which neither of them understands, surrounding lyrics corrupted from poorly selected scriptures and projected over distracting nature videos. When he gets to his seat and looks around, he sees exactly those of his neighbors whom he has so far avoided. You want to lean pretty heavily on those neighbors. Make his mind flit to and fro between an expression like the body of Christ and the actual faces next to him. It doesn't matter at all what kind of people they really are. You might know one of them to be a great warrior on the enemy's side. No matter. Your patient, thanks to our father below, is a fool. Provided any of those neighbors sing out of tune or have boots that squeak or double chins or odd clothes, the patient will quite easily believe that their religion must therefore somehow be ridiculous. At his present stage, you see, he has an idea of Christians which he believes to be spiritual but which is entirely imagination. His mind is full of togas and sandals and bare legs and armor. And the mere fact that other people in the church wear modern clothes is a real, although an unconscious, difficulty for him. Never let it come to the service. Never let him ask what he expected them to look like. Keep everything hazy in his mind now, and you will have all eternity to produce in him that peculiar kind of clarity which hell affords. Work hard, then, on the disappointment or anticlimax which is most certainly coming to the patient during his first few weeks as a churchgoer. The enemy allows this kind of disappointment on the threshold of every human endeavor. It occurs when a child enchanted by the idea of building video games buckles down to really study software development. It occurs when lovers have got married and have to begin the real task of learning to live together. In every department of life, it marks the transition from dreaming aspiration to laborious doing. The enemy takes this risk because he has a curious fantasy of turning all the disgusting little human vermin into what he calls his free lovers and servants. Sons is the word that he uses, with his continual love of degrading the entire spiritual realm by unnatural liaisons with the two-legged animals. Desiring their freedom, he therefore refuses to carry them by their mere affections and habits to any of the goals which he sets before them. He leaves them to do it on their own, and there lies our opportunity. But also remember, there lies our danger. If they get through this initial dryness successfully, they become much less dependent on emotion, and therefore much harder to tempt. So far I've spoken with the assumption that the people in the seats around him offer no rational ground for disappointment. Obviously if they do, if for example he knows that the woman with the silly hat is also a fantastic gossip, or that the man with the squeaky boots is also a miser and extortioner, then your task is so much easier! All you have to do is keep him from asking himself, if I can somehow be a Christian just as I am, why should the vices of these people prove that their religion is hypocrisy? You may ask yourself if it's possible to keep such an obvious question from even a human mind. It is, Wormwood! It is. Handle him properly and it simply won't come into his head. He hasn't been anywhere near long enough with the enemy yet to have any real humility. Everything he says, even on his knees about his own sinfulness, is all just parrot talk. In reality, he still thinks he's run up a very favorable balance with the enemy just by allowing himself to be converted at all, and he thinks it's a real act of humility and condescension to go to church with these smug and commonplace neighbors. Keep him in that state of mind as long as you can. <laughs>